fear, confusion, isolation. Just some of the many emotions young people faced during the pandemic when their lives were turned upside down and remote learning became the norm. And that's when I really started to crumble. Like my grades were horrible. I was really in a depressive state. Like I was sleeping all day, every day. I didn't have anything to do. I was just a body, like a shell. Like I, I felt like I genuinely didn't really have a soul or anything to live for. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than a third of kids recently surveyed have feelings of persistent sadness and hopelessness. You know how eighth grade is usually that year where you start to mature? Like I never got that. I remember we were driving to school. I had a panic attack in the car, like a quiet panic attack. Like I felt like I was going to throw up. And to top it all off, when the need for therapists was at its greatest, a study from the American Psychological Association found that six in 10 psychologists had no availability for new patients. The crisis was so dire that the U.S. Surgeon General recommended that teens step up to help each other. Some high schools already had programs in place. Pomona High established their counseling program in the 70s and have continued to expand and improve it to this day. As I got peer counseling, we really realized that, you know, kids are talking to kids. And if they're talking to each other, I want them to be trained in to know what to say or not say. What makes this program different is the rigorous interview process and time commitment. In order to participate, students receive four months of training before they're assigned clients and even go to classes on Saturdays. My kids are highly trained. They role play, they practice, they um, have a competency role play that they do in order to get certified. But these counselors understand their limitations. They never give advice. If you're hurting yourself, um, someone's hurting you, or you're planning on hurting others. In situations like that, like we have to tell us walk. And in every 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 session, we have to tell the client, like we, I have to speak to my advisor. Confidentiality also plays a crucial role. As much as it's difficult to say, you know, oh, Miss Balk, so and so was, you know, super drunk and high at a party. You know, oh, I don't want to be a snitch. No, dude, you're saving somebody's life. Because in the last two years, we've had like four students overdose. And while this community is sometimes plagued by tragedy, not many seek help. We're still in a culture where, you know, guys can't cry, man up. What I've seen a lot of is uh, families saying, what, what do you have to be depressed about? You've got clothes, you've got food, you've got a house. Why are you depressed? Get over it. But these students have learned the importance of emotional maturity. Going further into the program, it made me like, that's like realize it's just a stereotype, you know. Guys should be have the right to be able to talk to somebody, you know, communicate, have their emotions. Balk estimates that in her more than a quarter century with a program, she has led at least 1,200 peer counselors who have helped thousands. We feel the cracks. We're the sand that fills the cracks. But the even greater legacy is how many of these counselors have sought or planned to seek a career in psychology. Seeing that I've been able to make changes in people's lives in a positive way um, it has give, given me the courage to want to try out psychology. People go to who they feel comfortable with and who you feel comfortable with is people who look like you, people who speak like you, people who are in the same boat as you. Amy Johnson, KCAL News.